Hey, today is about a brief introduction on postcolonial feminism. In the 20th century, we have three hatred theory: deconstruction, postcolonialism, and feminism. Deconstruction is to crush logocentrism. Postcolonialism is to crush imperialism, and feminism is to crush patriarchy. To know deconstruction, you have to first know logocentrism. That means for every phenomenon, there is a thesis behind it, and it's just this thinking tradition of over two thousand years of European Western philosophy. Therefore, deconstruction is to remind us that there is no center, no hierarchy. Only difference, and to know post-colonialism, you have to first get a grip of colonialism. The Western colonizers enslave, exploit, and demonize the people in the colonized areas, mainly in the Third World. So post-colonialism is just a theory as reaction to the cultural legacy of colonialism, or is say the Eurocentrism or the imperialism. And in postcolonialism, we have three most famous scholars: Abu Said, Homi Baba, and Gatri Spivak. For Abu Said, he found that through this battery group of Eastern and Western, that the Eastern world is basically constructed or fantasized by the Western world. And for Homi Baba, he just found that the Western culture can be deconstructed from within. And for Spivak, she just focused on the third world women and the persecution and oppression they suffer from. And for feminism, there are three waves. We can tell that only about over one hundred years, the women's social status and their rights has been largely increased thanks to Virginia Woolf, De Beauvoir, Joe Walter, Chris Diva, all these joint feminists. However, in their work or their activities, they just forgot one group. Third world women are suffering from double oppression, philocentrism, and imperialism. And what's more important is that the Western feminism tend to demonize or homogenize the third world women, while ignoring their specific. Religious, cultural, or political backgrounds. Here comes my hero, Spivak. She just created this new dimension of colonial discourse criticism, and just introduced this to the feminism. And we can tell that both postcolonialism and feminism they have so many similarities. They both focus on the difference and anti-mainstream value, and just deconstruct the tradition. And today we have a perfect case that is Spivak's study on Genoa on the perspective of postcolonial feminism. When people are happily celebrating the wedding of Rochester and Genoa, they just forgot one person. The key character that supports the whole logic of the novel, Bertha, Rochester's ex-wife from West Indies, just crazy, locked in the attic for years, and to whom Rochester married reluctantly for money. In her crime, she set a fire and burned the house and made Rochester blind, just in a way legitimized his immorality. And also embellished Genoa's falling in love with a married man. And here Spivak throws at us a rather pointing question: Isn't it that th their happiness is decided by the madness and death of a, a woman from the third world, who is just barbarian and crazy? We can tell the binary group here: Rochester and Genoa. They're from the third world. They're rational and civilized, and they're decent and gentle. However, for Bertha, she is from the third world. She's barbarian. She's crazy, and she's ugly, and described as a beast. So Spivak came to this conclusion that the novel Genoa is ultimately patriarchal. We cannot deny that Genoa is independent. She's such a feminist model, and she is much advanced in her time. However, this novel is just a vivid picture of how the first world demonized the third world. Therefore, for many feminist criticism 
on the surface, they're very feminist. However, deep down in the core, they are just surely duplicating the Western imperialism formula, only subconsciously and involuntarily.